Welcome back. Chucky's coming to you live on 106.7 The Fan and NBC Sports Washington. Presented by Crop Metcalf, the official heating and cooling company of the Junkies. You looking to be their next five-star HVAC technician or plumber? Just visit CropMetcalf.com to join their team. I'm John Paul Flame, joined by Eric Bickle, Johnny Cakes, Auville, and Jason Bishop. And joining us right now via Zoom is Jake Russell, Washington Post sports writer, author of 100 Things Nationals Fans Should Know hmm. and Do Before They Die. What's up, Jake? What's happening, Jake? Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks hey. for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Got you it, can buddy. smile, buddy. You, you're on, <laughs> smile, man. You're on TV, brother. <laughs> Enjoy it. You guys are actually my, you guys are my favorite show, so... Oh, uh, thank I'm actually, you. I'm thrilled to be on the show. I've listened to you guys for at least the last decade and a half, and uh, I appreciate you guys being on during the quarantine. It helps a lot. Well, well thanks, thanks, bro. Thanks, man. Some appreciate kind that. words there, Mr. Well, what Russell. else are we going to do? I mean, it's either that or get That's fired. True. Right. <laughs> That's true. We all have time on our hands. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Jake, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask you. We had a little debate, uh, I guess it was on yesterday's show, right, JP, mm-hmm. about the mm-hmm. proposal? Mm-hmm. The new proposal, 67 pages from Major League Baseball, and they want to change the game completely. And they want, uh, you know, the bench players to be sitting in the stands six feet apart. And just it's crazy. You can't spit. Um, can't dap anybody up after a, a walk-off. What That's your the th- proposal. That's the proposal. I get it. I know yeah. the players aren't going to agree to all of it. But what, what is your thought on just the proposal in general? Well, I was waiting for you and EB to fight Cakes and JP over that. That was going to be a fun uh, wrestling <laughs> match. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure how much that will work. I think uh, the point's been brought up before that MLB basically wants to give the players some talking points to talk over and say, all right, here's something we can bargain over. Uh, here's you know things we like, things we don't like. But I feel like it's, it's going to be a pretty difficult ask because Major League Baseball is a much bigger operation than basically the Korean Baseball League and the Thailand, uh, Chinese Baseball League in Taiwan that's been going on right now. Um, I feel like those two leagues could give Major League Baseball a solid blueprint maybe for how to restart the league again. But uh, like I said, Major League Baseball is just such a big operation and there's so many – so many little things and so much of a gray area. It's not necessarily a black or white thing. There's so much gray area involved. And uh, I'm my basically my life motto is hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So I'm, I'm personally preparing myself for not having really any team sports until next year, honestly. Mm. Oh, so you don't think the baseball season is going to start after July 4th no. like they want it? Yeah. I, I I won't believe it until I see it. Pretty right, much, right. that's that's kind of my philosophy with this. I just feel like it's so tricky and so difficult. And the whole issue is, what if a player gets the coronavirus? What do you do? Do you quarantine the whole team? Do you stop the league for several weeks? How does that no. whole thing work? There's just so well, much involved. With I think it. you just quarantine him, and then I you think keep you just testing the him. other guys. Yeah, if you do daily tests, I think it could be doable. And I think mm-hmm. all of these shenanigans are stupid because if you just do da- no, honestly, they're just do- and I don't want anybody to get sick. But if you if you daily test and somebody t- ends up positive, you're going to catch it right away. Shut that person down. They'll take two weeks. They'll get healthy, and then you know presumably there have been very minimal risk of any spread, and everybody else carries on. I mean that's all you do. The, you know the yeah, big the issue. Is, the, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Well, the players they obviously don't want to catch it. Their safety is first and foremost in their mind, and I guess as Blake Snell pointed out, money is probably one you know one B compared to help being one. Well, how a. would they catch um, it if they're all? Te- I mean, they might catch it just going to the grocery, but if they're all tested playing, they're not going to give it to each other unless some dummy gets it. You know, you know, I guess going to a, I don't, I don't know, I mean, some sort of concert or something. I mean, I guess if they have to go out to the grocery store while they're living in, you know, hotels or wherever they're living in, in a traveling, you know, who knows really how you catch it, you know, because you do so many things and you're in your mind, you're being so careful with this and you're trying not to do anything. And people that have been super careful to avoid getting it, you know, wearing gloves and masks, they still catch it somehow. And, you know, obviously you've seen the report that Bob Miller had coronavirus and he detailed how difficult it was to deal with it you know two weeks after catching it he's still having problems with it although i think he does have an underlying symptom that he's asthmatic but still he's like so much so much better shape than any one of us no offense guys but he's in so much better shape than us and he's still having problems with it yeah but he's an outlier he's an outlier he you know he's an elite athlete with an underlying condition and you know Mm -hmm. so many of them are in asymptomatic as many as 50 percent i mean i just think I'm just taking it as a given. The players will cruise through it. It's not an issue. The ones that would be vulnerable, obviously, would be the coaches, the umpires, potentially. But, again, if they're all tested, I mean, we should all be so lucky to live in an environment where we all could be tested 
and not spread diseases to each other every day. I mean, to and me, that's it'd be another, and that's a, yeah, that's another issue. Not to make it political, that everyone, yeah, you, know, you don't want you want to get to the point where the country as a whole has easy access to getting tested and not have the uproar of people going, wait, how come these guys can get tested so frequently, but I can't? I'm having so much trouble getting through my insurer or this or that. Well, how come these guys can get it and I can't? Well, frankly, of course, that's a big issue. But frankly, that issue is going away. I mean, you could go sign up and get a test right now. I did it. It took me two minutes um, to get the antibody test, and anybody could walk in. Cuomo even said, we need people to come in and get tested. We got more testing capacity than people that are – no one's yeah. coming, you know? Now, the yeah. test isn't fun, Jake. I took it. The <laughs> test ain't fun. But you have the old-school test. Fun. You have the old-school test. There's a variety of different tests, Jason. Okay, They're not well, all up the nose, the right-hand corner that stinks. I know, but a lot of people are still taking that test that I yeah. took. Yeah, yeah, And it's not comfortable. Right. But I would just request that uh, you want a swab. You don't want that one. You don't want the one, you know, one cheek swab or something. You don't want the one that well, goes all the way up your nose and takes the right hand yeah. turn. It went all the way up, yeah. top of my brain, almost out of my skull. <laughs> yeah, right. That's I wouldn't how, really want that one either. They went. I would so, want Jake, your book, 100 Things Nationals Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die, you've updated it, right? Yeah. Uh, I Honestly, not going to lie, I didn't think I'd ever have to, but then the Nats <laughs> decided to change things around and then actually decide to win a World Series. Um, right. Especially, you know, a year ago, I had, thought they had no chance, and I don't think really anybody was outside of that locker room did either. Um, so in December, I reached back out to my publisher, and they said, yeah, duh, of course we want you to update this. So I spent about a month updating it, and I uh, updated about 80 or so chapters because even though my book covers Nats, Senators, going back 100-plus years, I had to go and fix little details like things that said, D.C.'s only World Series title. Obviously, it's not the only World Series title now, 1924. Um, they added to that trophy case. So it's something It was a nice, fun little exercise in going back and seeing what I wrote and um, updating things from chapters 1 to 100. Do you then – so you didn't add, like, new things to do? I – not new things to do, but I did add about eight new chapters. I added a chapter on Juan Soto, a chapter on Rendon. Um, I condensed the several chapters I had of the managers into one chapter to make room for others. Um, I basically updated that regard, and I had, obviously the, the first few chapters are about the World Series and about a team coming to D.C., so I had to obviously make a lot of concessions for that and delete some. How high up already is Juan Soto in all-time Nats? <laughs> At a minimum, top 20, uh, probably top five, if I had to guess. His performance in the postseason was just unbelievable for someone that age with that little bit of experience. Um, obviously, has ice in his veins, so he became a fan favorite right away. And, you know, when going into the postseason, you didn't really know how much, you know, which players would step up, and arguably he stepped up the most, maybe besides Strasburg. But his his performance was just out of this world, and I think people are going to obviously enjoy that the rest of their lives. What were your expectations of the team this year, considering they lost Rendon? Um, and that's a big hole in the lineup when you lose that guy. But what were your expectations coming in before the season was postponed? I'd say around 90 wins. Obviously, I think they would compete for a division title. Um, but I think the Braves did a really good job um, in this off season. I think they're still the team to beat in the division. Even if it's you know short season, long season, full season, whatever, I think they're the team to beat. Um, I think the Nats would have competed for that spot, and I think they still would have found a way to either make it in the wild card or as the NL East leader. Um, I think they would have been right in that mix at the end of the year. Yeah, well, I was just, I was, talk, was talk, talking to Eric earlier in the show. I, I, it just seems like years ago that they won the World Series, and it was just you know last October. Yeah, it's not like anything's happened since October, right? Right, <laughs> I know. The world's changing <laughs> right in front of our eyes. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that they should be, what, about 60 games in right now into the season, something like that, and they haven't played one game yet. It's just it's just crazy how it feels like the game, to me, I don't know, it feels like the game just happened, but it's so far in our rearview mirror now that so many different things have happened. We've had a whole NFL season since then. Uh, basketball and NHL has stopped mid-season because of this pandemic. It's just amazing all the things that have happened since then, and it's, what, seven, eight months now in our rearview mirror. It's, it's just crazy to think about. Do you still think so? You you actually think football? You think the NFL is not going to plow ahead and, and play? Like you think no sports until the spring? I, you know, Dukes and I were talking about it this weekend. I think it was Dukes and I, and he's of the mindset the NFL doesn't care at all, 
They haven't missed anything. They're not missing the draft. They're, they're, they're just going to do it. And I tend to agree with them. Well, I think they do care, but I think they're also, this is not that it's good timing to have a pandemic, but in their off season, it's worked perfectly for them because they gave fans things they wanted free agency in the draft. Right. And you obviously have the ability to do that without risking anybody's personal health. Um, I, I personally, I'm, I guess I'm probably selfishly guarding my own heart in case I, I don't want to get my hopes up for a season happening and then it not to happen. I'll be really upset about that. So I'm just bracing myself for not having a season. And I, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many variables and especially with football being a contact sport and players being so up close, it's not like in baseball where you're going to have an outfielder spread out, you know, 50 feet apart from, from his teammate. Um, I think that there's so many things involved and I just, I don't know. I know there's so, so many economics that go into this and how, you know, in colleges, how, you know, the schools are so reliant on their football teams. But I, I just, I don't know, I personally don't know how you can go forward with this. But there's with so many questions being unanswered. I feel like as time goes on, we'll probably have some more answers to the virus and we'll have some, you know, clarity and you can kind of get a more solid blueprint as opposed to just a guesstimate, kind of like how MLB proposed to the, the players uh, recently. Um, but I think until we have a vaccine, obviously the knife, the life won't really go back to complete normalcy until then. So we just have to have some contingency plans right now. Well, I think that, you know, I, I think that we need to all update our files a little bit. I felt similar to the way you felt about two months ago. But as the data is coming in and we're seeing who's really being affected by this um, and you're seeing the numbers for people that are under 60, under 60, it's basically equivalent to the flu. So what are we doing here? We got to update. We got to update our files on this for the for the people with underlying conditions and for the elderly. This is a nightmare. This is every bit the nightmare that we've thought. But it's not for the population at large. And we're learning that there are some isolated cases and everyone's going to send me the outlier of some poor kid, you know, that's got some horrific lung disease or something. But it's just it's not that. So I think that's that's why I'm so upset that we're making these decisions months and months in advance as we're learning more information every day. I don't know. I used to feel as pessimistic yeah. as you, but I don't anymore. I mean, it's probably my nature, too. I think I've probably been listening to you too much the last 10, 15 <laughs> years, so it's probably seeped into my unconscious, <laughs> my subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying not to be pessimistic yeah. with this one. I'm trying not yeah, to. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I heard you guys talking earlier about, you know, schools planning out for next March and deciding to cancel – you know, spring seasons for next year. I think that's a little too early to do that, honestly. You know, as pessimistic as I am, I think you should take us basically as a month-by-month -month, uh, basis. Um, yeah. I just personally, I just the whole question is, you know, if you would you feel comfortable going to a game if you did, you know, and your kid got sick or your relative got sick, would you be upset with yourself for going to that well, game? Well, they have to. Or, people you know, have to make those decisions, game? right? People have to make their own decisions yeah. on that. You know, yeah. I, I would tell my mother not to go to the game. Stay home. Jake, how can people get the book? Is it at jakerussellsports.com? That's correct. Yeah, head to jakerussellsports.com. Click the Nationals book tab. And uh, for the love of God, order as many as you guys want. There's nothing to find in quarantine. <laughs> Plenty yeah. of quarantine reading right now. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic book. Not that I'm biased or anything. Um, and I autograph it, and I ship it out within 24 hours. And trust me, I wash my hands all the time, so the book is clean. So don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jake. Appreciate the time. All right, thanks for the time, bro. Thank you, man. Right, thanks for having me, guys. Yep. You got it. Great thanks, work. Jake. Yep. All right, the book's buddy. 100 Things Nationals Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. He's updated it. Go to jakerussellsports.com to grab your copy. Remember, coming up at 9 o'clock should be interesting. We've got Michael Greco, who's the lawyer for Quentin Dunbar. We'll talk to him at 9 o'clock and John Clayton to talk some NFL at 940 right here on the Junkies.